Have you ever gone to export a video in Final Cut Pro and you're greeted by this dialog window? Sometimes it can be hard to find the missing graphic or video element in your timeline, but there's a super easy way to do this. All you need to do is go on over into your index and then type in missing. Then anything that has a missing element will show up right here. You can click on it and find the exact clip it's referring to. So in this instance, this video clip is missing an effect. If I wanted to find out which effect was missing, all I would need to do is go on up to the top right, click on the inspector, scroll to the bottom, and we can see that the one missing effect is this blur effect. I would just need to reinstall the effect and then I should be good to go. Additionally, you'll see that this video clip is also missing, judging by our index here on the left side, and of course, this beautiful icon. So you could of course go on up to file and select relink files, original media, then you could locate that specific file and you should be good to go. And finally, it should be noted that you can find any of the missing clips inside of your project by going to the very top right, making sure that your browser is selected, then you can just search up missing. And if you want to take it a step further, you could go on over to this icon, clicking on that, that will allow you to create a filter, just type in missing for all of your text, then create a new library smart collection. I can call that missing. And so now anytime I need to search for the missing clips that are inside of my library, I can just click on that and they will show up right here. This next tip I was reminded of from my incredible friend, Matthew O'Brien. Make sure you go check out his channel. There's a link in the description. If you've ever needed to match two colors the same way here in Final Cut Pro, rather than selecting the secondary color, getting your eyedropper, and then selecting the first color, an easier way is to simply just click and drag one color over to the other color well. Now that I've done that, this is a great starting point. I could click back on that color and then drag it down into the shadows. And so now I have an offset darker version of the exact same color. When you're editing in Final Cut Pro, it's extremely important to take note of where your audio levels are at. But right now, as it is, if I were to push play, all I have is this little tiny audio meter and it really doesn't give me very much information. But what a lot of people don't realize is you can actually just click on that audio meter and now I have a much larger expanded version. And if I want it even bigger, I can stretch it out over here to the left side. But what's also super nice is here at the top, it indicates exactly how much my audio is peaking by. So if it goes over this value of zero, it will tell me by how much. Right now, I can see that my audio is peaking by five decibels, so that just means I need to bring it down by at least five, maybe a little bit more, depending on your project. Have you ever needed to match the color between two different shots in Final Cut Pro? Or maybe you're just trying to steal the color grade from an incredible looking movie? Frequently, what I'll see people do is they'll take a video clip element, they'll shrink it down maybe, put it over here on the side, and then they'll try to match the colors off of that. And while that can work, there's a much better way inside of Final Cut Pro. Rather than doing that, go on up to Window, go down to Show in Workspace, then select Comparison Viewer. That's gonna bring up this secondary window and we could choose to either select based off of the timeline or we can go over to Save. And in here, I can go ahead and select whichever shot I want to save. Then at the bottom right, I can select Save Frame. Now this frame is going to stay locked in place and I can look at it at any time. If I were to go back to my regular timeline, timeline, I can see the two shots, I can push command six, and I can go ahead and start trying to match the colors as closely as possible. And if you want to take this a step further, go ahead and disable your browser on the left hand side, then going up to the top right hand corner of the comparison viewer, click on show and then select video scopes. Also, I can do the same thing here on the right side by pushing command seven. So now I have video scopes and I can match these scopes exactly to one another to make sure the color grade is as accurate as possible. One last bonus tip, if you really want to impress your clients when they walk in the room because you have so much going on on the screen, you can go ahead and expand out your viewer. You can go to the top left, selecting view. Let's go ahead and add in our vector scope and we can change this over to a vertical layout. Then we'll do that on the same right side. We could even go in and add in our vector scopes there. So now it looks like I really know what I'm doing when it comes to color when a client walks in. But in all seriousness, if you wanna take color correcting to the next level in Final Cut Pro, this is an extremely powerful workflow. Also, two of my buddies have made amazing color grading courses so I'm gonna link those down below for Brad West and Dylan John if you wanna pick those up. Highly recommend both of them. Previously on the channel, I've talked about how if you wanna perform a J or an L cut, 
you can select a clip and push Control S. That expands out your audio, then you can use these as separate audio lanes. But if you're somebody who doesn't really like using keyboard shortcuts and you just want to click with the dang mouse, all you need to do is go down to your audio waveform and double click and that will expand it out. Then you can double click on it again to collapse it. It should be noted that this does not work to show multiple audio elements. So if I were to right click and select expand audio components, you can see I have all of these different audio lanes going. This is just going to be an individual track if you double click on it. One of the fastest ways to edit in any editing software is by using waveforms. And for some reason, this specific option completely passed me by every single time I looked at it. Here in my browser, you can see I have a whole bunch of video clips, but it's just specifically the video element. Now, I might have gone up here to the top right and clicked on this icon to give them audio waveforms, but what I just realized a few weeks ago is I can actually go on over to this icon, clicking on the video strip and selecting waveforms, and now I can see the waveforms in my browser. I know this is an obvious one, but for some reason, I've just completely glanced over this option and it would have made my life so much easier had I known about it. So those were some hidden tips inside of Final Cut Pro. Did you know all of them? Let me know down in the comments. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button. It'd be greatly appreciated. And you might want to check out this video where I've got five more hidden secrets inside of Final Cut Pro. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.